Caddis Maximus here. I had this old disposal unit that I had recently made a video about replacing it and I decided I was going to uh, take it apart because I've actually never taken apart a disposal before. And I've cl cleared out the bulk of anything that's uh, offensive in there. Obviously I'm not going to do a perfect cleaning job. It does have some corrosion even though there's all stainless steel parts. This one was leaking and so I just wanted to see what's inside. They're real simple. It's just a motor. But I wanted to see, you know, what kind of damage, how worn out it is. Maybe people don't know exactly kind of how the veins look inside. So we're going to go and knock apart this Insincorator Badger. The Insincorator brand is probably the number one selling brand and has been for a long time. They're not the best, but they generally work. I don't know exactly when this one was put in. It's a Badger 5. Half horsepower. It had a two-year warranty, even says right here on the label. Oddly enough, they use external torques, a small ones, little E5 or E6s, four of them around the perimeter. We'll go ahead and pull off this top part. The worst part is going to be inside and trying to uh, get rid of the nut. One thing I should mention is the nut that does hold on actual grinding disc. They were smart enough, and on the back here, they have a little hex that's broached into the back of the motor shaft, so you can put an Allen wrench in there and actually be able to to uh, get it to stay still. Let's go and get out these little e-torques. These are kind of neat. They're pretty loose. Or I shouldn't say they were loose, but they didn't have much torque on them. And, whoop! As soon as you remove some tension, they just get real loose. One thing I was noticing is on, I assumed it was just in the plastic, but they actually have little brass fittings inserted into the plastic here for the discharge or the output tube, so I thought that was a nice touch. And uh, The new one, I didn't look closely enough to see, but they kind of look like they were plastic on the new one. I'll have to go and review that video. I'll have to knock these things out. They're actually not threaded in. Oh, they're super long. Coarse thread screws threading into some kind of sheet metal down there at the bottom. Let's get the rest of these out. Here we go, got those knocked out. One thing I'll say about those uh, external torques is those fasteners are really have a tiny, tiny head. Really are advantageous in really tight situations. And then these screws might come in handy at some point. And that just should release at some point. I think it releases this top part. It ought to come loose. Let's give it some taps. Yeah, we got something coming apart here. Now what I'm wondering, I guess we'll find out. I was wondering maybe if this is going to get caught up on the bottom side of the impeller, but it's, there we go. There's something holding, it's a pretty tight fit. Let me make sure there's nothing going to jump out at us. All right. Obviously, the worst area of this is going to be right under this. We'll see. I may not take that off if I can get the motor out. But this thing was pretty well worn out. Let me get a flashlight here. Here we go. This is just to show the inside. They'll get too grossed out. But those that metal band, that was actually had teeth. had teeth that were pretty well uh, defined and we can see how worn out they are. They're pretty rounded but what's surprising is most of the tangs are still there on really bad ones. All those teeth are ground off. Those teeth are what do much of the grinding work against the anvils which are right here, the grinding impeller. And so these little guys here which often get stuck, this one's not totally stuck, hit and bounce the food around against the little teeth inside this and if it's too big or it can't grind it all the way up this little thing will rotate over and then centrifugal force causes these to once it passes over the piece of whatever food that you're trying to grind up centrifugal force is supposed to throw them back out and they'll come around and hit it again and then beat it into a million little pieces they're a super simple device. It's the reason you're not supposed to put in like, you know, frozen foods. You know, ice cubes kind of shatter and that can actually help clear them out. But one thing to remember, and I'm noticing here, 
is the fact that grinding up ice cubes will only do so much. It might, you know, the pieces of ice might get a, a few food bits out from under the edge of the teeth that are in there. But it doesn't really make any difference. The very next thing that you grind up, it's going to get bits that are stuck in there. And the nature of these things and how hard they pound, uh, it's you're not going to have to really worry so much about clogged teeth. And the ice method, you would have to uh, do that every single time. You'd have to grind up some food and then put some ice in to clean out your grinder or your disposal. The other thing to make note of is the positioning of where these teeth are in relation to the discharge hole. These are, there's just a little bit of a gap between the top of this wheel and the very top of this hole. And so what that does is that ensures that no really large chunks can get through and end up clogging your pipes. It ensures that they have to be a certain minimum size, relatively speaking, in order to discharge. So once again, to prevent clogging. I almost forgot to mention, also grinding, especially like larger frozen items, it ends up bouncing off the top of these teeth and uh, puts a lot of lateral stress and can bend this rotor plate and then that's where vibrations if you, some every once in a while you run into a disposal that vibrates and that's what's happened now the worst thing is when you get silverware it's always the worst thing everybody you know it's inevitable that a piece of silverware ends up in the grinder uh in the disposal and that's probably the worst of anything that you can put in them even over frozen food and Anything else is just the fact that that's a piece of steel, and that's going to really round out and do the most damage, causing it to have to beat around the food, you know, more and more uh, in order to grind it. Now, I think we can get this motor out of here without um, pulling off that grinding wheel. I'm not going to do that because uh, there are some unspeakable horrors in between this, this deflecting plate or this little ceiling plate. Uh, and this rotor and that's the other thing regardless of all the ice cubes or anything else that you put in your disposal uh, There may be more premium brands, but this insincorator and these style are probably the most common in the United States And it's kind of eye-opening to know that there is just a huge gap right there that's almost an inch tall and you know five inches in diameter and all this stuff just builds up under there, and that's inevitably what causes, you know, uh, corrosion, even of the stainless steel. It's just always all this, this big mass of ground up food and water for years on end eventually makes it its way past the seal. But I think we can get this motor out of here. And notice I am, you even got a little peak of something. I mean, that's really gross what's under there. Fortunately, I kind of let this air out, and there we go. Now, that's actually quite interesting. Let me flip this upside down. That's even grossing me out looking at it. It's really gross. So they have uh, an induction motor, which is a fascinating. I always thought that these were brush motors, but they're not. They're half-horsepower induction motors, and this is actually an interesting one. You know, I have, don't run into these very often, but instead of having a capacitor, which could introduce, uh, you know, a little bit less longevity, although it's debatable, they use a clutch system. So this is has a what's known as a startup winding, and then a switch over once it gets up the speed to its power windings, and we can see that here is we have these little thin stage of windings and there's a switch down there and we can actually let me get the flashlight we can see how burned up that is so that's probably one of the things that kills these is that switch ends up arcing to the point that it just doesn't work anymore so by default when it's turned off that switch is in the on position which would have oh, so when it's turned off this coil is actually engaged this extra special kind of thin one and then when you turn it on, that helps provide additional phasing in order to get the motor started up or initially spinning and to provide some startup torque. But once it gets spinning, it interferes with the operation at speed. So it has two little weights here. And what's kind of interesting is as it speeds up, these little counterweights spring out, retracting the switch ring. This little ring is just like a piece of polycarbonate and it is always gliding over the finger of the switch 
and as soon as it gets up to speed, it retracts and turns off the switch and disables that second winding. So it's a real simple and fairly reliable means of eliminating capacitor uh, for an induction motor. I think it just ends up harming efficiency, but that's kind of interesting to see. We can also tell by looking at this at the shaft seal, there is no real evidence of corrosion on the rotor itself. We can see that the corrosion is actually right over here on the side of the unit. Where's my flashlight again? Right through there. So it was, come on camera. There we go, right in that corner. So it was the part of the lip seal had started to fail, which is probably another reason you don't want to grind up ice cubes and frozen foods is because all that jarring and beating can end up affecting that sealing. Quite frankly, the condition of this blender, even though it's gross, was still operational. There's still teeth in it, still had good uh, hammers, or I don't know what, grinding dogs in it. Um, and this grinding up something too violent ended up popping that seal or weakening it. I won't admit to ever grinding any silverware or ice cubes. Anyway, for some reason, I always thought these were like brush motor uh, just because they have high startup torque. Uh, but they're not, and they probably because they need to spin a whole lot slower. The maximum speed of this would be like 3,500 RPM. And for some reason, it always sounds like these things are really cruising, but that's all they're running at. They're not running at 15,000 or 20,000 or anything that's like in a, you know, electric drill motor. The other thing that's kind of disappointing is we can see that there's a, you know, a deep step. So it appears that there's a ball bearing up there, but they just use a sleeve bearing in the back of the motor, even though it's pretty large, maybe, you know, 14 millimeters or five eighths of an inch. Still pretty cheap. Uh, you know, they, I guess they don't really need it, but in a device like this that goes through so much shock, uh, it would be nice to see them put a ball bearing. They're not that expensive especially for some kind of appliance like this that's really ends up being installed for a long time. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here, but that was just kind of, I always wondered what was, you know, inside one of these really common uh, disposal units. We'll call this a dissection. I really appreciate everybody watching and commenting and subscribing. I will, at some point, make a big push on responding to more comments, <laughs> but I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the Catus Maximus channel. Until next time, Catus Maximus out.